All right, welcome everybody to today's live webinar on guaranteed performance in shared environments. Uh, just a quick overview of the agenda for today's webinar. Um, you know, for some of you that I see on the call, you are familiar with the Ray Networks. I see some partners on the call. I see some familiar customers, uh, but I also see some people that are new to us. So uh, for those that are maybe hearing about or looking at Array Networks for the first time, I just want to provide a very brief background and brief overview of the company. Um, then I want to dive right in to the pros and the cons of virtual application delivery solutions. Uh, and it's really uh, more a section on the pros and the cons of a virtualized approach to networking and security functions. So we'll take a look at that. And then once we understand that, we'll move on to the topic of uh, today's webinar, uh, but also moving into a solution that's very unique to Array Networks, which is an approach and a solution that can provide uh, not only higher levels of performance, uh, but guaranteed performance for uh, virtual app delivery, virtual networking and security in shared uh, virtual environments. Um, uh, and that solution that I was talking about is uh, a product, a solution that we make called the Array ABX series. So I want to introduce that platform, its characteristics, how it does what it does, and then touch on uh, a few of you know, what it feels to be uh, some key solutions uh, that we can enable using that platform. And then, of course, uh, reserving some time for questions and answers at the end of uh, at the conclusion of the webinar. Uh, so speaking of which, uh, before I make some introductions here, um, if you do have questions, uh, comments uh, as we go, um, go ahead and enter those either into the Q&A window or into the chat window within the WebEx platform. So we'll collect those as we go along. And at the end of the webinar, you know, we'll start to field those questions. And while we do that, that will give other people a chance to uh, uh, enter in any additional comments or questions uh, that they might have while we uh, answer some of those initial questions. Uh, so with that being said, uh, my name is Paul Anderson. I'm a Senior Director of Marketing here at uh, Array Networks. Uh, I'll be conducting uh, you know, the bulk of today's, uh, today's webinar. Uh, but also joining me, I have uh, Ed Kuyper, who's uh, a Senior SE here with Array Networks. And the reason I want him on the call is obviously, um, you know, as we get to the end and a lot of times people have, you know, some business questions, some high-level questions that I can feel, but many times uh, there are some very specific questions, some technical questions, and uh, uh, having Ed here should give us the ability to uh, field those questions. So with that, uh, let's do the quick, the, you know, just a quick background of Array Network. So Array has actually been around for a fair bit of time. Uh, founded in 2000, so you know, as you can see here at the bottom, meeting enterprise class app delivery requirements for over 15 years at this point, and you can see some of the uh, some of the marquee customers down here that uh, have been with us for uh, quite a number of years. Uh, we're headquartered out of Milpitas, California, so right here in the Silicon Valley in the Bay Area, California, and just over 250 employees. Uh, but we are a uh, global organization, so we have obviously a uh, uh, significant presence in North America and Europe, uh, but also um, uh, quite a significant presence in uh, China, Japan, India, uh, emerging emerging markets as well. So a truly global organization. Uh, and you know, so if you happen to be uh, you know a customer from one of these regions, you like what you see here today, uh, just be confident in that uh, you know, this, this product is available to you and, and we can support your organization. In terms of the market that we're in, um, I talked a little bit, uh, obviously, the topic of today's webinar, application delivery, applica application delivery in virtualized environments. Uh, application delivery and security, you know, that's the market that we're in. Um, in terms of the products, um, you know, I mentioned a little bit already about the ABX series product. That's our newest product. It's the one that we're going to be focused on today. Uh, but, you know, we really, we grew up uh, introducing and pioneering uh, the application delivery controller product. So Array Networks was actually the first to introduce, um, you know, back in, you know, 10, 15 years ago when others were doing simple load balancing. Uh, we were actually the first company to do what we called then integrated traffic management. Uh, you're taking the load balancer or rolling in other layer four through seven services such as 
SSL offload, caching, compression, traffic shaping, web application security, connection multiplexing, rolling those all into one integrated appliance. So, uh, you know, not only were we the first to do that, but we've been doing it a long time. So it's a very robust, feature-rich, reliable, scalable product uh, that can really go head-to-head -head, uh, with, with anybody in the market. Uh, also, for a very long time, we've had a very robust, very feature-rich uh, SSL VPN uh, as well, um, both product enterprise class. Uh, in terms of the segments that we serve, um, yeah, enterprise class, as I mentioned, uh, we seem to have a, a very strong fit in small to medium-sized enterprises just because of uh, not only is the product reliable, scalable, feature-rich, uh, but it's also very simple to deploy and configure as compared to some competing solutions, and it's also very cost-effective and provides tremendous value uh, as, as compared to some of the competing solutions on the market. So that value proposition seems to, uh, even though you see some really big names here at the bottom and we do have uh, some significant large enterprise accounts, you know, day-to-day -day bread and butter, uh, we're a tremendous fit for the small to medium-sized enterprise. Um, same thing for public sector, state and local government, education, and more recently, um, uh, with the emergence of the cloud, uh, we've found significant traction in providing our products to the likes of, say, SoftPlay or IBM, who take our load balancing and turn, you know, integrate it with their cloud management, and then offer load balancing as an infrastructure service. And so we've seen an uptick in the number of cloud hosting managed servers that buy from us and create cloud hosted managed infrastructure services. Likewise, we've seen an uptick in software as a service uh, for those that you know have outgrown deployment in a public cloud like AWS and are standing up perhaps a private cloud to scale an application to millions of users, they need the SSL offload, they need the high availability, they need the scalability, they need the security. Um, we found ourselves more and more being deployed in those private data, uh, private clouds uh, to scale software as a service. So uh, you can see, uh, you know, serving a, a broad spectrum of customers at this point. Uh, unlike uh, some alternative solutions, we go out of our way to create our own technology in our own implementations. A good example of this is our SSL stack that's been you know, developed in-house to provide higher levels of performance, but also um, to avoid and to not be vulnerable to things like uh, heart bleed, shell shock, ghost, drown, a lot of those open SSL vulnerabilities. We make our own stuff. Um, our customers haven't had to deal with any of those uh, vulnerabilities, no patching, no remediation, et cetera. So uh, we have a very strong technology uh, portfolio. Uh, and we've been around for a while. Um, at this point, uh, we have a significant number of customers worldwide, uh, just over 5,000 customers worldwide at this point in time. So just uh, hopefully a quick background there, bring everybody up to speed and build some awareness uh, for Array Networks. So that being said, hopping into uh, today's discussion. So the virtualizing of app delivery functions. So I have a little graphic here, and on the left, you know, you're looking at something that pretty much everybody should be familiar with at this point in time. Um, I don't know the exact statistics at this point in time, but uh, in terms of the servers out there, what percentage of servers have been virtualized? Gosh, I'll say 70% plus, and probably closer to 80. Uh, don't know, but you know, virtualization is becoming the norm. Most of the servers out there uh, have been virtualized, you know, using the likes of uh, you know VMware, Hyper-V, KVM, others, etc. And you've got your server, your hypervisor, your OS, and you've got your various application workloads that are running in those virtual machines, uh, whether that be VDI, whether that be Microsoft applications, you name it, enterprise applications, web apps, doesn't matter. So everybody's very, this is the norm, everybody's very comfortable with the concept of virtualizations for data center virtualization, uh, you know, how to, how to gain maximum efficiency um, in you know, hosting and running these applications. And I put on the right here, I use the word new-ish because actually we're seeing more and more of this now. So, you know, it used to be the applications ran on the servers and then in front of the servers you had, you know, this variety or this mix of different uh, networking, security, app delivery functions and, and these were all deployed on independent hardware, single purpose independent hardware appliances. 
and uh, you know more and more uh, there's requests from customers and you know vendors have started to make virtual editions of their networking app delivery and security functions and you can now take these functions and you can run them on a virtualized server just like you can an application workload. Um, so this is what, uh, you know, it, it hasn't reached that same level of penetration, uh, and you'll see there are some reasons for that. Uh, but this is what we're going to be talking about today, is this, this trend towards uh, people are wanting to take a, a, a more software-centric or a more virtualized approach, not just their applications, but also the supporting functions uh, that support those applications. And this is, you know, just some confirmation of, of those trends. So, you know, this right here is particular to load balancing and application delivery. But what I will say is that looking at um, uh, some other information from other analysts with respect to other uh, networking and security functions, they may not have the exact same numbers here, but they have similar trends. And so what are we seeing here? The blue, which is the bottom of this graphic, it shows that, you know, over the next five years, there's going to be, you know, a, a subtle decline in, uh, you know, sales of that traditional hardware-based, uh, you know, load balancing and application delivery appliance. And, yeah, the market is growing overall, but what's really driving that growth is what we just talked about, which is a growth in people wanting to deploy virtual or software-based uh, additions of these application delivery and security functions. So uh, I, I think at this point, you know, people are, this is the direction things have been going from, you know, say 2012 through 2016, and there's a fair degree of, of confidence that for the most part this trend will continue. And, you know, why is this the case? Well, a lot of it is the same value proposition that applied to virtualizing servers in the first place for application workloads, a lot of that same reasoning and a lot of same, those same benefits, um, they also make sense for why do you want to bring some of these functions, these uh, virtual application delivery security networking functions into a virtualized environment. Um, these are not all the benefits, but I mean, it's just a sampling. Uh, you're streamlining your data center architecture, and I kind of use this, the visual on the left and the right, it might be a little bit extreme there, but, but you get the idea. Uh, reducing hardware cost, you know, you're, you're, you're consolidating on a, a single infrastructure, uh, so you're getting those economies of scale, and you're not paying for what is many times a very, very steep price for dedicated purpose-built appliances uh, for some of these networking and security functions. Um, obviously, you get the lower cost footprint, you're saving on space power cooling, you get that software-centric management, you know, when you run something in a virtualized environment, it typically comes with a, uh, some sort of management scheme that allows you uh, portability and you can move things around, uh, you can be very flexible and very agile, and you can be very efficient in the use of your infrastructure and your capacity. Um, portability, flexibility, as I just mentioned, uh, and yeah, efficiency, and uh, in many cases, such as the public cloud, uh, benefiting from utility consumption, which is, you know, you pay for it when you need it, when you don't need it, you're not paying for it. Um, pertains a little bit more to public cloud than private cloud, but another benefit of a virtual approach uh, and a software-centric approach. But there's a catch. So those are all the benefits. Um, but, you know, from experience, you know, with our customers, with talking to under, other vendors and, and their experience with their customers, uh, yeah, the, the software is growing, but in, in reality, it, many times when you start to talk to a customer about the nature of the workloads, um, the realities of their deployments, um, we see that oh, I have, you know what, I have a, a, a really big need for, um, you know, SSL offload or uh, SSL secure transaction processing or, uh, you know, I need to enable multiple functions at the same time or this application needs to scale to a lot of users and we come back to an evaluation that you're going to have to eat up a lot of VMs on general purpose virtualized servers in order to scale out to the point where you can meet uh, the performance requirements that your application workload needs. And we just come right back to why do that? 
when you can get this purpose-built appliance that can get you to where you need to be um, in a much more cost-effective manner and with much better performance and much better likelihood of getting that performance. So the catch is a trade-off here. You know, in, for some application workloads, software is great. Um, you know, we're finding that in, you know, development and staging, it's a no-brainer. Um, you know, but in other cases, not quite as much. So you see here, with the virtual or the software, you know, you get the software defined, you get the portability, you get the utility consumption, you get all those great benefits of agility. Uh, but with physical, you know, but what you're sacrificing there is performance. Of course, with the physical, um, you get the benefits of hardware acceleration, highly scalable, guaranteed performance. But again, it's not as agile. You, you have the, the single function. Um, that's what you can run on that box. Um, and it cannot be repurposed. It cannot be moved around, et cetera, et cetera. So right now, you know, situation dictates. Um, it depends on the application and the workload, uh, you know, which solution is going to be best for you. But there is a definite trade-off in this point in time. So, you know, where is this an issue? Potentially, you know, where I'm going with this is where might virtual not yet really be that right solution for a particular application or workload. Um, enterprise applications. So, uh, you know, the competing demands of data center consolidation while maintaining sufficient performance for ERP, CRM, email, supply chain, et cetera. The point being, in the enterprise, there are mission critical, business critical applications that today are front-ended by dedicated load balancers, dedicated networking, security infrastructure, because they need to have that guaranteed performance because the business rides on the function of those applications. Moving that and supporting that with a best effort virtualized solution, it's just not worth it. It's just not worth taking that chance. Um, a SaaS, a software as a service or an application service provider, as I mentioned, you know, maybe an enterprise application or a business application needs to meet, uh, needs to meet the requirements of 100 users, 1,000 users. Okay, cool. Uh, but software as a service, if you have a very successful uh, software service offering, you might be talking about hundreds of thousands, perhaps even millions of users, and that that cannot be effectively or cost-effectively supported with the performance required. Uh, with a virtual solution. So uh, again, this might be uh, an instance where you know, virtual is not yet up to the task or may not be the right solution. Um, and also, uh, infrastructure as a service, hosting, or MSP. It, it really depends on the customer. If you have a lot of um, you know, entry-level uh, type customers where best effort is okay, great. But what if you have you're providing infrastructure as a service, managed service, hosting services for an enterprise customer who's got some of these business critical applications who also demands a service level agreement. Well, you know, I can't offer a service level agreement to an enterprise uh, using a virtual solution in a best effort, general purpose uh, virtualized server environment. So these aren't all of them, but it gets your mind thinking about, you know, where are some of those situations where even though people are liking virtual, uh, they still may not be the best choice and they may not be up to the task. So this graphic here and this table here is hopefully designed to, to let you visually see the trade-offs that I talked about in uh, you know, the, other, uh, the other slide where I had the graphic of the scale and the trade-off between performance and agility. And, and I want to have you, know, you know, have you guys look at this. Um, let's say that a company takes the approach of a single purpose appliance uh, for these various functions, perhaps each one of them coming from a different best of breed vendor. So you get best of breed, yeah, I can pick the right tool for the right job. Performance, yeah, I get that. Uh, each box is running on a single purpose, you know, dedicated hardware appliance that's been created and tuned to give maximum performance for that function. Agility, no. What you, what you bought is what you get. You've got that one appliance, uh, it does that one thing, and that is pretty much all it can do, and it is located where it's located. It's not going anywhere. Uh, and cost, uh, this, is, this is a big no too, right? Uh, when you do best of breed on best of breed purpose built networking and security hardware, um, you're gonna pay for that. So, hey, the trade off there. 
The other approach is there are some vendors that have take what I call a vertically integrated approach. So they sell you one appliance, so we're still talking about hardware here, and on that they say, I can offer you the world. Um, I've got modules for ADC, modules for VPN, modules for web app firewall, WAN optimization, next gen, you name it, you name it, uh, access control and so on and so forth. Um, Okay, yeah, there's some benefits to that. Perhaps it's a little bit easier to manage one, one appliance there or multiple functions from one appliance. But let's look at some of the drawbacks. Uh, best of breed? No. You know, maybe one of those functions that company is really well known for, uh, but they do, you know, only a so-so job on the remainder of the functions. So are you getting best of breed? You might get it for one, maybe two of those functions. Not necessarily for all of them. Uh, performance. Even though we're talking about a physical appliance here, the truth of the matter is that if you put one of these functions on an appliance, yeah, you're going to get good performance. But just think about it, and this has been proven time and time again, if you take one appliance and ask it to do ADC, Web App Firewall, SSL VPN, other functions, each time you add a function, that performance drops significantly and you're no longer getting the performance you need to support the application and you're no longer getting the performance you thought you had paid for. Um, so performance, no, not with multiple functions enabled. And agility, not really. Um, again, it's, you know, it's, this is the box that you bought. It's what it's going to do. It's what it's always going to do. Wherever you put it, that's where it's put and it's not going anywhere. Uh, and cost, usually these vendors uh, aren't that cost effective, to be totally honest. So. There are some good points, but there are definitely some drawbacks to this as well. And then finally, talking about virtualization, which has been the focus of the earlier part of this webinar, how does that, you know, how does that shape up? Best of breed? Yes. I can buy a virtualized appliance from whoever I want, multiple vendors. Um, so I can get best of breed. Uh, performance, as we talked about, though, you're putting it on best effort, general purpose server, virtualized resources for hypervisor management, uh, competing uh, resources on the server, you're not going to get that level of performance and you're not going to get guaranteed performance. Agility, yeah, you're good there. Um, generally, if you're in a virtual environment, you have a virtual environment management system. You can spin things up, spin things down, move things around, very agile, yes. Uh, cost, I put no, but it just depends. Um, if you really need to scale it, no. Um, if it's a smaller uh, application or deployment or workload, yeah, it can be more cost effective actually uh, buying the virtual edition vice uh, buying a dedicated hardware appliance. All told though, the point that I'm making here is that, you know, um, there's no one size fits all yet um, and that each of these different approaches has its pros and cons and its trade-offs. But that being said, you know, we talked about some of those applications earlier where you really want it all. And so that's what we set out to do is we saw that there was no way or no way previously to uh, get what you like, you know, get what you love about cloud and virtualization uh, without having to sacrifice the performance uh, that you get from the dedicated hardware approach. And this really just summarizes that. So what we're trying to do here is bridge the gap and bridging the gap with array networks. So although the agility and the efficiency of cloud and virtual is desirable, many use cases, applications, and customers, they cannot sacrifice performance. And so to bridge that gap, we have introduced a new approach, uh, a new platform uh, that we call the Array AVX. And you can see a picture of one of the models here. Uh, it's purpose-built hardware, so uh, purpose-built by Array Networks for this purpose. Um, it has a virtualized appliance OS that is running a KVM hypervisor. So this is a platform. It's been virtualized. Uh, and on top of that, you can run up to 32 VMs. Um, Unofficially, I like to kind of call it a, a server on steroids, and uh, you're, you're going to see why here in, in a moment. So, as I mentioned, what we're trying to provide people is the agility of cloud and virtualization with the performance of dedicated appliances. So, 
bear with me, I'm going to go around the world on this little infographic here uh, and, and try to describe uh, this new product that, that we're introducing. The elements that are in the top half here in the white or grayish portion, this refers uh, to the elements of the solution that are cloud and virtualization centric. And then the gray portion at the bottom refers to uh, what we're able to do uh, with respect to maintaining that level of performance and guarantee performance that you expect from uh, dedicated appliances. So on our AVX appliance that's been virtualized and has uh, up to 32 uh, virtual machines, um, you can mix and match. So you can have different sizes. You can have um, entry, you can have uh, small, medium, large, so you can deploy different size virtual machines on the platform uh, depending on the requirement of the function or depending on the requirement of the application workload. Uh, and, and you can mix and match those. So, you know, perhaps one workload needs large, another one might need small, uh, so on and so forth. So very flexible in, uh, in that manner. Also, you can deploy uh, multiple functions. So uh, from Array's portfolio of functions that I mentioned earlier, you know, we have a virtual application delivery controller. You can put that on this platform. We have a virtual SSL VPN, our VXAG. You can deploy that on this platform. Uh, we also have uh, a newly introduced WAF product, the VWAF or the virtual WAF. You can deploy that on here. So it's very, it, it's simply a platform for you. If it can run on KVM, it can run on this platform. And when I say deploy additional functions tomorrow, that refers to Array Networks functions, networking, security, app delivery, but we are in the process of working with third-party best-of-breed vendors and proving that uh, those solutions can also run and gain the benefits of higher levels of performance and guaranteed performance as well. So we can deliver tremendous value from this platform today, uh, but, uh, you know, in the future, uh, it's going to be open as a platform to supporting uh, different functions and providing customers greater and greater value as we go along. Uh, Pay-as-you-go capacity, another element of, of uh, what people like about cloud and virtualization. This appliance doesn't need to be bought outright. You pay a small upfront amount for the hardware, um, but the remaining cost of the overall platform can be purchased in quarter capacity increments. So you can say, hey, I only need four small you know, virtual instances today. Uh, hey, that's all you've got to buy today. And as your needs grow, as you want to support more functions, as the workloads uh, grow bigger, you can simply upgrade that license and unlock more capacity as you go. Um, so very flexible in that manner as well. And finally, everything that was true about the virtual additions of Array's products, uh, you know, their ability to uh, integrate with uh, the likes of uh, OpenStack, the likes of uh, VMware, uh, the Realize Orchestrator, Microsoft System Center, uh, even new efforts we have underway with Cisco, ACI, and APIC, uh, all those types of things that were inherent to our ADC and our SSL VPN function, um, those are still hold true running on this platform, and so you can get a level of that uh, orchestration and integration that uh, people like about the virtual approach. So switching gears a little bit to the bottom portion of this graphic, here's why we're not sacrificing on performance and why we're able to guarantee performance. And the reason is, number one, we've held back resources on the platform for hypervisor management uh, so that we can eliminate VM contention. Secondly, what we've done is for each virtual machine running on KVM, we've dedicated, um, dedicated CPU resources, dedicated SSL resources, dedicated memory, dedicated interfaces. We use techniques like SRIOV, other techniques uh, to ensure that each virtual machine on the platform gets dedicated resources, dedicated performance. So, when we say a small ADC can maintain a certain level of performance, 
That's guaranteed, and that will never change. You know then that you can support business-critical applications and also uh, customers, if that's the case, uh, with SLAs and other requirements. And this here is, is a little bit of an illustration of that. You can see here uh, that I'm introducing the, uh, right now there are three models, uh, you know, small, medium, large, uh, in the ABX series product lineup. And what I've done here is I've given, you know, just a quick example. So the largest one can support up to 32 virtual machines. And as you go down the product line, Basically, it splits in half to where you can do 16 entry or 8 entry on the 3600. A very interesting thing that we did with our entry level 3600 is some customers said we really like the guarantee performance, but there are some cases where I'd rather support a larger number of either applications or customers, but on best effort. Can you, can you allow me to do that? We said, you know what, we can. So you can either do guaranteed performance for eight, four, two, or one, or you can toggle the switch and do best effort for uh, 16 shared entry virtual machines. So very flexible. And at the bottom, I've given, um, you know, obviously to go through all the permutations of the performance for small, medium, entry, large. What I've done is I've given for each platform here the guaranteed performance for a medium-sized instance. And it, as a general rule of thumb. Um, you can simply double that or half that. You know, if, if you want to know what's the specs for a large instance, simply double it. If you want to know what's the specs for a small instance, simply divide it by two. And to get to entry, simply divide it by two again. Uh, so by providing these specs here, it gives you an idea of the guaranteed performance for a medium-sized instance. And with some simple math, you can understand uh, the performance uh, that you can expect uh, from the different size virtual machines on the platform, uh, in this case, uh, reflecting specifications for an ADC product. And with that being said, I'm going to quickly roll through um, what I consider to be four, I don't know, key use cases uh, for this product at the moment. So obviously this is not all of them, uh, just a sampling of uh, four that, uh, you know, we're seeing with our customers today. Um, so to highlight them, consolidating load balancing for enterprise apps, high performance virtual environments, uh, secure application access and availability, and offering application delivery as a cloud service. So let's take a look at the first one. So consolidating load balancing for enterprise apps. So I talked about it earlier. In many enterprises, there's, gosh, for every application out there, there's you know two load balancers supporting each application, and you get to a point in your data center where you've got, you know, racks and racks of these load balancers uh, supporting these business-critical enterprise applications. Those, in many instances, right now are coming due for uh, a refresh, and many of those are actually reaching end of life for uh, some of our key competitors. And what we're finding here is those applications still need dedicated performance but we're really, really talking to those customers and saying, don't go down that road of repurchasing 32 individual single-purpose built appliances. You're going to, that is not going to serve you well. You take a look at the AVX platform where in two rack units, you can get the equivalent of 32 dedicated load balancers uh, and you can support and consolidate all of that and support all these applications and maintain the same level of application delivery controller performance that you would have gotten out of those individual appliances. So this is just a huge opportunity here uh, to do things better in a smarter way on a better platform. Think about that. That, that platform that I described, it's so flexible. I mean, you're, you're you're replacing all those load balancers, but you get a platform that if you need to repurpose that, put different things on it, it's going to serve these customers a lot better over the next, you know, four to five years. So uh, don't repurchase those individual appliances. Instead, pay less, fewer hardware appliances, less space power cooling, install ones, provision remotely, purchase capacity as needed, and you get more uh, per application, SLAs, per VM management, orchestration integration, and all the rest that I talked about earlier. Um, a high-performance virtual environment. So one of the things that I did was I went out and looked at a competitor um, and, and the price of a virtual machine, a virtual ADC, um, at a certain specification. And 
I looked at what it would cost to deploy, to purchase that software and deploy it on general purpose hardware. Then I looked at what it would take to deploy the equivalent virtual machines on an array AVX platform. Same exact feature specifications, same exact performance levels. Both of them are virtual editions. It's just one is running in our array uh, AVX platform. The other is running on general purpose virtualized servers. So what I found here is uh, the virtual ADC on the left, that is our, a competitor running on a virtual uh, general purpose virtualized server. On the right, this is the array AVX, um, the virtualized ADC hardware. And so we, in, this, in, the, in this instance, we, put, we have 32 ADC instances. Each is giving close to the same amount of throughput, a little bit more for the virtual ADCs on the array platform. And um, the ADC cost, so just the cost for the ADC function. Um, for 32 at 25K per instance, you're looking at about $800,000 for just the software uh, for that competing solution, whereas a fully provisioned array AVX appliance can be had for $150,000. Um, and you know, that's including the, all 32 of those APV instances. So tremendous cost savings. And if I look at it, you know, in the case of the general purpose virtualized server, you still have to pay for the server. You still have to pay for the yearly hypervisor costs. Um, do you get guaranteed performance? No. Uh, do you save on space, power, and cooling? It's probably going to take more space, power, and cooling. So looking at the, the, the green for the array network solution, you're not paying for any more uh, anymore for the server. It's running on the AVX appliance. Uh, there's no additional cost for the hypervisor. It's KVM. Um, guaranteed performance, yes. Space power and cooling, a lot less. So if you're looking for an environment in which to run virtual networking security and app delivery functions, this approach just makes a lot more sense. Secure application access and availability. So we talked about that this platform can run both the array ADC, it can also run the array SSL VPN. So on the one hand, you can ensure application performance and high availability for both internal and external users. Uh, load balance for high availability. Use the acceleration features like connection multiplexing, SSL offload, compression, caching, you know, for the application performance. Uh, on the other hand, you can also enable secure application access. You get the SSL VPN for mobile and remote users. Uh, you get SSL encryption for secure access to web apps for both internal and external users. And both of the instances feature a reverse proxy architecture with web application security to provide a first line of defense uh, against attacks and so on. Uh, all the connections are terminated uh, in all instances by the array appliance uh, and looked at before being handed to the server, which gives us the opportunity to uh, drop or deal and mitigate with uh, illegitimate requests and attacks and so on and so forth. Uh, and with what I talked about earlier, uh, because you're not asking an appliance to do two things at once, because we're running on individual virtualized appliances, each with guaranteed performance, you're able to run these two functions and each of them runs in their power band the way they're intended to uh, with high levels of performance and guaranteed performance due to the architecture of the AVX platform. And finally, uh, this is the example of a case study which I'll show on the next slide. Um, you can offer application delivery, load balancing, networking, security, SSL, VPN services as an infrastructure service or as a managed service. Why? Because each VM can be, you know, run a networking function which can be sold to a customer, but because you have guaranteed performance, you can say to the customer, this is what you're buying, and you can guarantee that they're always going to have that. So this becomes a tremendous platform for service creation because it can offer different sizes, different functions, pay as you go, so you can grow your business in proportion to you know, customer demand. And the service that you, services that you can offer, uh, not only can you offer different functions, but you can guarantee the performance for those functions. So AEC and SSL VPN for infrastructure service, MSP and hosting providers, on-demand variable size, variable size services with guaranteed performance, automate provisioning via integration with cloud management and orchestration, which is hugely important for cloud service providers, and I'll talk about that 
uh, in the little case study snippet on the next slide, um, or secure remote access for admins and customers. Um, if you've got uh, remote data centers, global data centers, global points of delivery um, that your administrators need to have access to to uh, manage, maintain, provision the underlying infrastructure uh, at the data center, you can do that with the SSL VPN. Um, you can use different um, uh, virtual portals or virtual instances and you can actually allow customers to also remotely access uh, that remote data center or pod to manage, configure, maintain the infrastructure services that they've purchased. Uh, and a perfect example of that is uh, the SoftLayer IBM implementation, one of Array's biggest customers and one of the first adopters of the AVX platform, large infrastructure as a service cloud provider, um, got uh, 23 data centers. This is an old slide, it's well over 40 by now. Uh, load balancing and SSL VPN services, as mentioned, um, array networks technology powers the providers load balancing and secure access infrastructure services. And why do they need the AVX series virtualized appliance? Um, they were using individual uh, dedicated single purpose array load balancers to power their dedicated load balancing as a service offering. And it's great, it worked out well, but as they scale, they needed to have a more intelligent way to be able to support these services in their data centers in a way that consolidates infrastructure uh, and, uh, you know, where the space is at a premium, so reducing space, power, cooling, et cetera. So, um, you know, this AVX platform is, uh, you know, right up their alley. Um, drive down hardware costs, save on space and power, and off offer enterprise and web scale businesses guaranteed performance and SLAs. Now, just to conclude things before we get to the Q&A, um, this is a bit of an eye chart, but I did my best. You know, on the previous slide where I had those three different ways of going about deploying some of these services, I showed there was pros and cons, you know, good and bad for each approach. And this slide here is basically showing, actually you get almost all the good and none of the bad with this approach. Uh, performance, you get scalable performance, guaranteed performance. You can deploy multiple functions without sacrificing performance. You can get best of breed, uh, not just array, but other uh, functions from other vendors as part of our future vision. Flexibility. You can repurpose this appliance, different sizes, different functions, move them around. On-demand capacity. Um, you have a new application or application workloads grow. Simply change it from a small to a large instance or a buy incremental capacity license to grow what you can do on the box. Multiple functions, variable sizes, IT benefits, streamlining infrastructure, so standardizing on one platform or one hardware platform that's really dedicated for supporting your networking, security, app delivery functions, fewer points of failure, uh, as opposed to having all those different boxes out there for multiple vendors, you're looking at uh, you know, kind of a unified platform. Uh, Compliance-centric, so for those of you, this is a perfect solution for a private cloud environment, uh, being able to have a virtual environment that's under your control. And uh, virtual capacity, you know, we've, in the case of several customers that um, are using the AVX platform already, it's interesting that it's not a given that, let's say, a particular you know, application group or a particular security group or another group in an enterprise just automatically has access to um, uh, VMs and, and virtual infrastructure in their company. You know, that's run by the server group or that's run by this other group. And, you know, let's say they want to deploy something, size something, try something. Um, they don't always have virtual capacity that they can just use automatically. And the cool thing is, is that extra capacity can be purchased on the AVX appliance and used as a KVM virtual environment, giving some of these groups immediate quick access to a virtual environment for things that they need to do. Cost, obviously, um, tremendous reduction in terms of cost associated with space power cooling. As I mentioned, you can pay as you go, lower CapEx for hardware, uh, and lower OpEx, right? I mean, if you have something where you can spin up and spin down these different functions without having to go out to the data center and stand up or install uh, a new hardware appliance. And with that, that concludes the, uh, the bulk of today's webinar, so we'll move into the uh, the Q&A session here, and let me quickly take a look at our window and uh, see what kind of questions we have here. 
Ed, are you uh, are you on the line? Yes. All right. So uh, just some uh, just some quick things here. I have a couple of requests, uh, more of housekeeping requests in terms of. Uh, receiving a copy of the presentation or will there be a recording of the webinar. Um, directly after the webinar, I uh, send out a uh, thank you note that's got a PDF copy of the, uh, of the webinar presentation. Uh, so that can be used in case, you know, you want to immediately share this with maybe other people on your team or use it maybe in a conversation with management, etc. Uh, in terms of recording of the webinar, uh, this generally takes uh, from the recording service one or two days, so I would say generally, uh, you know, that's a Monday or Tuesday thing, and we post it to our YouTube channel, um, YouTube slash Array TV, and I also send out a quick note just kind of not notifying everybody of its availability. Um, all right, so into the questions proper here. Can you explain again um, how you ensure guaranteed performance uh, for the virtual machines on your appliance, Ed, I'll throw that one to you. Okay. <clears throat> so the question is, uh, how do we ensure? So what we do is we actually dedicate resources. So uh, for each uh, virtual instance, we will dedicate uh, a number of CPUs, um, computing resources, memory, um, <clears throat> and uh, and Ethernet. So. By doing that, uh, we can definitely dedicate and get dedicated resources over there to guarantee performance. Um, and it's also going to be based off your sizing, so you have your large, your medium, and small, and your entry. Um, with shared entry on the lowest model, that is not going to be guaranteed. Uh, however, for the um, small, medium, large, uh, that will be guaranteed, and entry will be guaranteed performance by, by uh, dedicating those resources to the appliances or to the images. Uh, let's see here. Can you clarify how the solution is priced? Do I need to pay for the hardware, then also pay for uh, the ADS, ADC and the SSWPN as software module? So I, I think I can, I think I can answer that. As as it stands right now, our pricing model is based purely on capacity. So um, as a customer, you would buy the ABX platform. Uh, with, let's say, quarter capacity, you could buy it from the factory either um, as quarter capacity, half capacity, three quarter capacity, or full capacity. Um, and that's the way it's priced. The um, VAPD, which is our virtual application delivery controller, which can run on the platform, and our VXAG, which is our virtual SSL VPN, which can run on a platform, um, we don't charge for that software. So uh, you buy the capacity or I suppose the hardware and the capacity uh, and the uh, array network functions that can run on the platform, uh, you can deploy as many of those as you wish uh, up to the capacity um, that, uh, that you purchased. Ed, anything you want to add to that? Um. No, not not really. Just going back to uh, to those application resources and in doing that, uh, for example, if you were to deploy a, an entry, you're going to be assigned one virtual CPU, whereas with a large, it's eight virtual CPUs. So when you talk about licensing to capacity, if your license only allows you um, you know too large, then uh, you know you, you, that means that you're going to be using uh, eight CPUs per per instance. There. Same with memory. An entry is like two gigs of memory, where a large is 16 gigs. So those license packs are really going to um, to limit you on on getting uh, limit you to the resources that you're allowed to use on that box. The nice thing is the hardware when you purchase it is fully capable of handling up to the maximum uh, service pack. So the pay as you grow uh, is a really nice feature there. Um, so you, you know you can get in at the smaller license pack, but as you grow and you have, and, and your needs uh, expand you have the hardware in place where you can uh, add an additional license pack to get more out of that unit. Um, how do I manage the appliance? Can you talk a little bit about managing uh, the platform itself and then also how you would manage the uh, hosted uh, app delivery and security functions? Sure, I can take that. So currently managing the AVX is through CLI. So it's much like Cisco. Um, so if you are, if you're versed with Cisco CLI, you'll be able to handle the the um, 
<laughs> the AVX. Yeah. It's actually very simple command-wise to configure, and we do have quick start guides on how to do that. Once you have an instance uh, ported in or imported into the AVX, uh, there's some there's some requirements if it's third party. If it's an APB or an access gateway, you're you're going to use um, our our CLI or uh, SSH into those instances or our web UI. Um, you can also invoke console commands from the AVX uh, SSH session, which is nice. So if you have a third party virtual instance. Uh, there is a virtual serial driver that has to be included on your instance, uh, and that's the driver that you use to uh, to really handle that virtual um, console. And then you can actually console into that third-party virtual instance. And also, you'd be able to uh, use whatever's built in, whether it be SSH or Web UI, uh, to that that third party as well. How do the feature sets or capabilities of your ADC? or SSL VPN functions uh, stack up against uh, some of the competition, uh, F5, for example? And so for F5, since that was used, um, what, what we really, uh, we can go head to head with F5. So for performance um, from, from, from top to bottom, we can compete. Where we come out on top is cost, also ease of use. So where F5 uses uh, complex I rules and script-based, uh, most of ours or everything in ours is uh, drop-down based select. It's all hard-coded. So when you look at doing things like server load balancing and SSL offloading, maybe some um, iCookie group methods, uh, it's just drop-down and select. So it's much easier to manage. Um, and once you have it deployed, uh, it's very easy to delegate the responsibility to others to manage it as well, where with F5, you really have to understand I rules to be able to manage that. Um, so the cost savings is not only on the hardware appliance, and, but it's also on, on the, the management side. So it's going to take uh, a different, it's a different level uh, to manage F5 where it is to manage the array product. So you can feel more comfortable uh, delegating that management out to, to, to others. Now, we do have an ePolicy script engine. It's much like F5, so if there's uh, some functions that you may not find hard-coded in our APV, you can use our ePolicy, and if you understand iRules, you could use that, that thinking to, to, do, uh, to set up an ePolicy to handle that. But in most cases, about 95% of what F5 is doing with iRules, you can do with our built-in hard-coded um, policies um, on the APV. Is there a way to determine how many of my existing load balancers could potentially be consolidated into one array appliance? Um, absolutely. Um, if you know how many, uh, you know, so choosing SSL, how many uh, SSL, uh, what is your TLS? Uh, transactions or TPS, transactions per second. If we can figure that out, if we can figure out your total connections, um, taking uh, those statistics, we can then say, okay, well, let's match that up against uh, the APV running on our AVX and see how we can consolidate that. Okay. The other questions are, okay, do you, is there a reason to have uh, separation in your load balancers? Do you, have, do you want to give ownership of certain load balancers to different departments? Or can you consolidate that because you have the management of the load balancers by one single department? So it's definitely um, easy to do as long as we have certain information to, to look at and, and match that up with our specifications. In one of your slides, you mentioned third-party networking and security functions. Can you elaborate on this a bit more? Could I literally run any KVM-based uh, VA on the array appliance? So in theory, the answer is yes. Um, what Array is doing now is we're in the process of testing uh, best of breed, uh, but we are definitely open in testing any third-party KVM-based KVM virtual appliance. There are some requirements um, in regards to, uh, you know, if, you, if that KVM appliance, if you're going to need console access, uh, we, that KVM has to support that virtual serial, it has to support specific uh, Ethernet drivers. So, um, in theory, any KVM is possible, but like anything, um, we want to test and certify it for you. So, and we're definitely available to help with that. 
Yeah, so that's right. So we, we do have a fairly extensive uh, deployment document right now that we are using as a guideline in some of the work that we're doing with the, uh, some of the best of breed vendors for uh, some of the other networking and security functions. So uh, it's the ultimate vision uh, you know, for the platform, um, and that is something that uh, you know, we're currently engaged in that in order to expand the value of the platform even beyond um, you know, the value proposition that was articulated in the, uh, you know, in the presentation today. Let me, uh, let me do a quick double check here. I think I've answered all the questions that we had, so let me do a quick last check. And I think that's all of it. So uh, good, good. We've been able to answer all the questions that we had. And um, so with that, um, I'd like to thank everybody for joining us today on the webinar and hope you found it informative and hope you'll join us on a future webinar. Thanks, everybody.